from one. Yeah, what, but what was I money. saying? I forgot. Was I saying like? I no uh, idea, man. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be answering some of your questions that you have asked us on Twitter. Uh, we've gathered kind of all of the questions and we grouped them into a few kind of categories so we can try to answer as many as possible. You ready Thomas? I am, kind of nervous. It's the first time we're doing it. Uh, it's kind of cool. Let's start with mobile because uh, I think there were loads of questions about that. For example, Zachary Wilson asked us, I'd be willing to pay for an iOS version of Raycast. Is this something you guys have thought about? It's crazy, right? This was not a question that I expected going to be one of the most asked questions. Did you think that popped up when we're putting out a tweet? I didn't, but the funny thing is I felt the need for it. There were times I would be walking on the street and I would want to basically have access to my AI chats on my phone. I can see the the appeal there. I oftentimes, when I'm away from my computer, do something else, I have an idea, or like see something which I want to save or bookmark or just like yacht somewhere down that I can bring it up in the next day. And when I'm on the Mac, I use the floating notes of Raycast for that. So I would love to have something similar in mobile as well. And I think Raycast is interesting because on iOS, there are like certain restrictions that you need to work around, which you need to be a bit creative. I think there are a bunch of cool things that, that we could do. This definitely pops up very often, uh, pretty much since day one. For the ones who don't know, Raycos is like a native Mac application. So it's built with Apple's technologies like Swift. So it's 100% optimized for the Mac. That allows us to deeply integrate into the operating system. It allows us to be having an outstanding performance. Um, and it also is like, gives us the opportunity to make it feel like it is part of macOS. Therefore bringing Raycast to other platforms is, is quite a big undertaking because you basically need to start from scratch. Um, there are like different ways to do that technology wise. You could then re-implement it and, and make another native application. There are cross-platform technologies like Electron. But we think like when you have something that is so deeply connected to the operating system, it's really good to have that natively because you need those native integrations. Yeah, it's a tricky one. We don't have plans for this, so this will not happen this year um, for sure. Right now, anyone that is a Raycast Pro subscriber, they get access to Raycast AI. And currently the AI chat is powered by GPT 3.5 Turbo. But we often get asked, when can we allow GPT-4 model, right? When can we expose that model instead? For the ones who use Raycast AI while it wasn't beta, they might had already access to GPT-4. What we quickly realized Raycos is a very special scenario because it's available globally. Everybody uses it very heavily. So the AI usage we have is extremely high, which makes a big bill on open AI because those things are expensive to do. And GPT-4 is much more expensive than GPT-3.5 Turbo. So we basically had to remove access in the beta uh, because our bill got essentially too expensive. And now we're figuring out how we're getting it back. So we're working on it. We don't really have a, an ETA for it. We want to get it out as soon as possible because we're getting it asked constantly. The other thing is like, you don't really want to spend time thinking which model you want to do. So it's, I personally see it like as an implementation detail. You wouldn't go and ask a company to use a specific framework to do the job for you. And then there are also other models, right? So there is Anthropic Cloud. There might be something coming from Google or they have to call models. So it's not only about GPT-4, I think. It's about how do you think about all the different models but do you want to end up in a world where you pick the model you want to have? That's very technical, it might be great. Or do you want to be in a world where it just works essentially? So that's something which I think the whole industry actually trying to figuring out, not, not only us. I think a seamless integration is better. You know, you ask what you want and hopefully you get the perfect answer. And behind yeah. the scenes, the right model is used. It's something that with time and as the technology evolves, this is just naturally going to happen. We have to wait and see. Exactly. We have some questions such as, uh, do we have any plans for a lifetime deal? What about regional pricing? What about reduced uh, cost for students? 
So do you want to fill us in on what's the, what's happening here? We launched Raycos Pro roughly a month ago. And I think the first thing that I underestimated is when we put it out, how much demand we got and how many requests we got for things that we didn't had to worry about before, including student discounts, regional pricing, all sort of that, which showed us like how Raycos is used around the globe. So we acted very quickly on that. We added already payment providers such as WeChat and, and PayPal, which was heavily requested, and a few others. So we basically tried to enable everything that Stripe offers us. And then on student discount, we also already started a student discount program. So people that study at the moment, they can apply. They're getting 50% off for the time they're studying. And uh, that was also like great. So we see a lot of students applying it, which, which makes me very happy. Um, but yeah, payments is like... We basically put it out one plan. We like to keep things extremely simple. We didn't want to have like different plans with different features. We wanted to keep it simple and have Raycos for free gives you the essentials. Raycos for pro gives you the extras. So it's very binary in this way. We might consider that in the future, but for the time being, we don't really want to look into that too deeply. Because when you have multiple plans, you need to decide which feature goes where. It gets a bit overwhelming and maybe confusing for the user as well. So they really like to keep it simple. Um, nevertheless, we try to make it basically accessible to as many people as possible. Let's twist it around. So let me ask you a question as well. Michael Scott uh, asked on Twitter, can you create a web page where people can send their suggestions and others can upvote? It would be easier for everybody to track. So Petro, what do you think about that? I think it's a great idea. And I think uh, being transparent to our users on what we're building, what we're planning on building, listening to their feedback is great. And it's definitely the type of culture that we are trying to build here at Raycast. But once again, you know, we are at this point where we're a small team. We ship really fast. And people who follow us, they know that every two weeks there are new features coming out. And we have this concept of a Ray Day. So every Friday, uh, the entire team can basically work on anything they want. A lot of the features we have in Raycast now actually came out as a result of Ray Day. So often we might not even really know what we're doing specifically in which order. We obviously have our priorities. Like for the last few months, we've been focusing on uh, anything related to pro plan and AI. Overall, I feel like we're quite flexible with what we're working on. So building a web page where people can upload their requests and upvote and stuff, although it sounds great, not sure we have the capacity to manage and maintain something like that. But we do have a Slack community where we are quite active on and we do listen to our users' feedbacks and advice and uh, requests and often we act on them. But one thing that we could consider doing is maybe turning on GitHub discussions in one of our repos. Then people who are interested in suggesting a feature, they can create a discussion on there. We can keep an eye on it. And anybody else that's interested in that, they can upvote and they can leave comments and they can maybe even spec it as, as a community, you know? If there's something we can do that people feel like they're involved in the development of Raycast, I think that sounds great. Let me give you a, an easy one. Okay. Um, when are the Raycast AI wallpapers coming out? Ah, so the wallpapers are out. They're actually out. We released them a week ago, I believe. So let's just do a huge shout out to Nicholas, who spent so much time designing this amazing 6K or are they 8K? I don't even know anymore. Extremely <laughs> high resolution wallpapers. So they are live and you can download them right now if you go to raycast.com slash wallpapers. First of all, hey, Matt. Uh, Matt is like a long time user. Uh, he was one of the first extension contributors as well. I think he built the, the first Roussel extension um, that we kind of first developed. So pretty cool to see uh, that he's still with us. Like we did something like this, right? Like last year, we did the first time Raycast Wrapped, which is um, usage statistics. I must say, I kind of like that it's like once a year. Like you have this special moment, like, oh, it's getting end of the year. You're kind of waiting when your rap gets out and then you see it. And then you're going to be surprised by how much usage your Raycos is going to have. So I kind of like when it's this one moment where you see it and then it's like, wow, okay, I use it very heavily. And then it 
brings a special surprise because if you see it every day, it would take away from that a bit. Nevertheless, I also see like some people really like measuring their life and see everything. So there is maybe a cool thing for like some lighter weight version of stats. I use Raycast for window management and I use that probably a hundred times a day, right? Maybe thousands. For stuff like that, it saves me a lot of time, but I'm not really interested in how often I do it. But when we do this wrapped at the end of the year and you see all of these things together, all of the numbers together, including with some kind of like uh, approximate time saved by using the shortcuts, then I find that more interesting. I get the appeal for it, you know, totally. Like some people really like to, to keep up to date with their stats. And yeah, maybe that's something we can think about, you know, nice. see if we can do a light version of it. The more extensions that exist inside Raycast, the more value Raycast has, right? It's almost like the exact same model as the iPhone, you know, like with the App Store. Right now, we're not really focusing on a monetization strategy for extensions. But what we are thinking about doing is some sort of like developer kind of reward program. Because right now all extensions are free, right? So it's not like we sell extensions and we just don't give out profit. Like there's just no such thing as paying for an extension right now. We're still defining the details, but you can expect things such as maybe discount code in our swags, maybe get given some swags, maybe get a subscription to Raycast Pro. We try to do something that sounds fair and that pretty much everybody that contributes gets something back. This was actually the first reply that we got on the tweet. No. I feel like we should we should uh, answer this one. And I, I think the reason they're asking this is because people from the outside, they're usually quite impressed with our speed of shipping, right? Like every two weeks, there's a release, there's always new things, improvements. Uh, maybe you can shed some light on that. So I think we have a very unique culture in this sense. But let me start a bit like how we think like or how we operate on from the big level down to like the day to day. Like on a grand scheme of things, we locking in some higher level projects that we want to do in a timeline we think is reasonable. For example, we think about the months, what are things we want to do in this month, and then we want to push it out and basically breaking down then the projects. And then projects have like an owner. So each project has at least one owner, sometimes two. But those people are the direct responsible individual to basically drive this project to shipping or to a conclusion. And then when we go a level more granular, we really operate on a weekly basis, I would say. That's really the cadence that we work on. We have a Monday morning meeting where the whole team gets together and where we show progress. So you see from everybody what they worked on the previous week, what their progress made, maybe they hacked something on Ray Day. It's really simple. Like We basically align on the bigger picture that we want to do in the quarter or in the month. And then the individuals work on basically the plan to execute it. We tend to keep things as simple as possible. So we try to make features rather simple, ship it early instead of complex and ship it late. But that's the thing where we can keep the speed of like shipping things incredibly fast. That's the number one thing we do. Like we ship, we tweet, we repeat. <laughs> that's basically what we do, right? It's a mix of not having many processes relying on individuals and their, their judgment and building something for ourselves instead for somebody else. But one of the things about Raycast is that it's quite flat. People own different tasks and then it's up to you to go ahead and run with it, you know. It's definitely quite a fast-paced environment because we ship fast. I think if you like the pace and if you like the energy of building and shipping, it's a perfect environment. The Q&A video is a great example, right? It's like, should we do a Q&A video? Yeah, let's do it two weeks later, here we are. I feel like that's a great example of how we build products in a way. I think I heard that somewhere, I can't remember, I think I read it last week on Twitter about some author, great book, whatever. But it was like a bit of a phrase where there is only one priority and the priority is now. Everything you don't do now, it doesn't matter um, that much because things are gonna change, right? It's very hard to predict what you're going to do in three, four, five, six months. For big companies, it might be possible. In the stage we are, it's impossible, right? If you want to build something that stands out to people, you need to be a bit edgy. And I think like it's funny because we have a very high quality bar. Like when you look at the, the tool, how it behaves and the design we have. So we 
very focused on that because that's important for us. Everything that the user sees and experiences is important to us. That's where we want to spend our time on. Um, we might not have the best architecture, I say that all the time. We might not have the best infrastructure, but like that's not our focus. Our focus is like a great experience for the user. And we take the hit of like building that for the people um, and try to be as fast as possible for that.